delighted to be joined by the one and only Mr. Dave Colwell. He's always a busy man, busy with you've got Hopi Price there on, on the, yeah. the jersey, if you like, but uh, a busy stable actually at the minute. And Derek Chisora back with you. Yeah, he is, yeah. Um, we had, a, as you know, we had a couple of fights together uh, a couple of years back, and he, then he needed me to train him in London, but I couldn't. You know, I've got, got my stable in, in my own gym got my family up here so uh, it wasn't something that could, could be worked out um, I thought about doing what I did when I used to work for Haymaker and, and I'd still be training Ryan Rhodes and, and people like that where I'd train them in the morning shoot down go and help train them at night and then come back and, and I was doing that but I was a lot younger then <laughs> do you know what I mean and also I'd, I didn't get to see me, me kids at all because it was just too hectic so I didn't want to put myself back into that um, but for this fight now, you know, after Derek's last fight, he's, he's had a little think about things, and then we had a chat, a good chat, and yeah, he's uh, he's back up up at my gym, working alongside Hopi, Larone, Jordan. You know, it's it's, uh, it's good, it's good vibe, good good atmosphere, and um, he's getting some he's getting some good work in. It really is. He must still be very hungry. Though. He's made a few he quid, is. Derek, hasn't he? So yeah. he doesn't need it. No, that's you know that's what we spoke about. He, he's not, he, although he, he he does like to get the best deal he can for mm. himself why not um, he doesn't need to box for money mm. um, that's 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 where you need to know where there's still something left to give because you can want to do something even though there's nothing left there mm. but working with him these, these past four weeks past four weeks he's, he, he's unbelievable like, I can't I can't explain to you how, how he's actually surprised me because I kind of thought this is going to be this is going to be hard work because it was hard to get him going the, the previous time that I coached him just changing a few things but he's, he's, he's like a he's like a young kid and his attitude as well he's, he said he's, he's just come he, he, his words are he's come we know he goes you know just wants to learn and just wants to and he's and he'll, he'll stay behind and he'll watch Jordan spar, he'll watch Hopi spar, he'll watch Lerone spar. Whereas before he trained, go do his own business, whatever. Now he's hanging about in the gym and he's talking to everybody, like as in, as in learning and, and learning from different people's experiences, different people's um, perspectives. Um, it looks like he's really, really enjoying it, and I can see that in his performances in the gym. I'm really excited about about working with him. When you reel off the names of the stable, it's a really interesting mix, actually, mm. isn't it? You know, with, yeah. with obviously Larone, he's a real character, isn't yeah. he? And a real talent. And yeah. Jordan, we know all about his skills. Yeah. And, and then Hopi, yeah. who we've got to give him some airtime because yeah. it's his night on yeah. Saturday night as well. Tell us a bit about him. We've seen him. You know, obviously, he's, he's emerging, if you like. But tell him what you know about him that we don't. He has got the best, the best mentality out of everybody I've ever worked with. And when I say that, where even though I've had fighters that have won titles and more proven and everything like that, I'm not talking about boxing side, I'm talking about the, the, the mental aspect, how they see things, how they work things out, how they handle things, how things just don't fluster them. Some people uh, take, you know, like Rebellion, it took me a few years to get the red mist out of him when somebody caught him in sparring. He'd want to go straight away rather than being smarter and calculated. It used to take a bit of time for that. You know, some people don't believe themselves to the max. Some people believe themselves too much. Hope his mentality has been fantastic. From when I took him to the wild card before he had his pro debut, and we were told, you know, he's gloved up, ready to spar at half past ten. Didn't actually get in the ring to spar until two o'clock in the afternoon. But he was calm as anything. I'm thinking at that point I didn't know him that well. I'm thinking, how's he getting handled? Is he? But he went in there and was just cold as ice. Just did what he had to do. Anthony Joshua Bill, the same sort of thing. You're on, you're off. You're not fighting because of weather. You're not fighting unless he's there. Gloves came off twice. He was like, cool, all right, you're on five minutes. Right, okay, cool, no problem. Go out there, do a job. He listens to everything. Sparring, Kid Gallard, people like that, in early days, especially when it's rough and, and horrible for him. He's this long range of kid who's got something mauling him on the inside. And he's mentally just caught with it. No panic button or nothing. He's got an un, un, unbelievable understanding of the game. But the kid's talented. He's very, very talented. And now he's starting to develop more strength about him. The technique on his punches is better and more ground, so now he's catching me on the, on the right spot of the shot. But then the work that he's doing with, with Danny Wilson and Boxing Science, I'm seeing him physically now, and people, sparring partners, are now talking about how he feels strength-wise, you know? He's sparring with guys that are super featherweights, heavier, and they're 
like surprised at how, how strong he is because they think he's going to grow as well. He's going to get yeah. fill out a bit, isn't but he? Do you know what? He does this way easy. I, I, I never said to a fighter, I'm signing you at a certain weight or I'll, that's it, we're working this way. So what you are is what you are. I, I, I don't want to keep him down in weight because he's still developing. But when he's still eating right up to the weigh-in and he's doing super bad, you've got to remember only a couple of years ago, he was I think he was doing flyweight or something like that in mm. amateurs. Still a big, tall kid. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So now he's actually grown some more, but he still can make that weight so easily. So you know, super bantam weight so easily. Last fight, it was supposed to be at eight twelve, and he came and he was eight ten and a half. He was it, it done the way. It was not a problem. Um, five before, sorry, so yeah. So yeah, so um, it's, it takes all the boxes so far, and that, that doesn't mean that you want to rush him. No. You know, people. Some people say, oh, you've rushed him. He's sixteen and one against the kid that you know. He's five and zero. Oh, he's going to get sixteen and one. Yeah, but. It's about the fights, styles, fighters, the makeups of both fighters, and also then look at the record, right? How, yeah, as I just said, he's more experienced. But more experienced at what? He's been to the ring more times than, than, than Hope is a pro. But if you look at the fights, and if you look at the guys that Hope is for, he's fought a couple of guys there that have come to win, mm. not come to just go through motions, he's come to win. It's a big, that's, that's, that's experience. You know, sparring countless rounds with Kid Gallard, Leon Woodstock at Super Featherweight just fought for a British title, Jordan Gill, um, Akib Fiaz, sparring all these top, top mm. fighters, yeah. Reese Bellotti, you know, for Bellotti's last fight and Opie's last fight, they did, they did an eight rounder and a ten rounder. Sparring with all these kind of experienced men, experienced pros, different styles, but, but at a much higher level than what Opie is now in the careers, that's experience. You know, that is experience. And don't forget, he had a great amateur record, great amateur experience as well, fighting all the top kids as well, you know, boxing, junior Olympic gold, boxing in world championships, Europeans, all that sort of thing. So where is I just saying more experienced? You know, I, we'll see on Saturday night, you know. I, I know what my man's capable of doing. I know what I see in consistently, day in, day out, day in, day out. And that's why in his last fight, only two weeks ago, they were all saying, oh, but he's fighting, he's fighting against yeah. Ida saying, do you, do you want to take an easier fight? I was like, no. Every time they give me an opponent, I'm like, no. Because he's, what is the point in him just sparring all these top fighters and doing all the work that he's doing yeah. and then going and fighting a guy that's not as good as the guys, nowhere near the level of the guys that he's sparring? Well, what's the point in that? Somebody's just going to try and tuck up. So I wanted Grande, who I knew was unbeaten, was going to come because he wants to be a big star in Italy on his own. I knew he would come for it and he gave him a good fight. And that's, that's real experience. Now, in that, you mentioned a couple of times Kid Galahad. I just want to put something to you because our producer, Josh, is taking great claim for all of this, right? But what he did was he had a word with Ali Drew recently and he asked Ali Drew about Lee Wood. And then that led to a little bit of back and forth on Twitter between Lee Wood and Kid Galahad. Oh, is it there? So, so it's Josh who's taking all the glory. He's, he's, he thinks he's a king matchmaker now. Oh, very good. There he is. Very good. So he thinks he's the man. But what can you tell us then? You manage Lee Wood, obviously. What can you tell us about that and, and the next step for him and all the rest of it? Well, I've just been, I've been like Josh, just watching, watching it spice up on, on, on Twitter. I'm like, whoa, okay. And um, listen, Lee will take that fight in an RB. Um, We've got an issue at the moment where we've got a rematch because obviously Kanzu was a champion, yeah. boxing in literally in, in, in Eddie's backyard, um, so Golden Boy had a rematch clause, no problem. I was surprised they took the rematch clause, I didn't think they'd take it, but they have, so they want the rematch. But then the WBA have turned around and said that Lee has to fight Michael Conlon, who, brilliant performance and everything, but this is where the problem with the WBA is. There was no need to make an interim title fight mm. the week after their world title's been contested for. You've got Leo Santa Cruz, who's supposed to be the super champion, that hasn't defended for two and a half years, not boxed yeah. away for two years. So why are you still calling him world champion? Because he's got no, yeah, he's not been defending it. He should have been kicked into touch. Kanzu's rank, ranked about number three in the Ring magazine, fights Lee Wood. They fight for the real world title, not the regular world title. But then a week after that, they've made up an interim title on the spot. It's like, why? There's no need for that. So we just got to tidy up that mess, <laughs> and I ain't got a clue what is, what's happening. Oh, well, that's boxing, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, well, unfortunately. Great to have your company, Dave, and we look forward to Saturday night, so thanks for joining us. Thanks.